Duro Smart Carpet or Magic Carpet. This is I Dream of Genie stuff. <laughs> it certainly is. Uh, good morning to you, Tim, and well done. Ash Barty, got to get it in there. Yes, uh, this is incredible stuff. Uh, MIT, the geniuses in the US who create all sorts of amazing technology and research, have done this over the last couple of weeks. Tim, they've shown us that this carpet doesn't look that flash. It's black with sensors, but you get the idea because this is research. And what they've done here is they're able to teach this carpet to sense what someone is doing on top of it and then extrapolate into a 3D moving image. So just in that little second bit there with the grid, you can see this tiny little grey uh, blotches happening through just that interaction with someone on the carpet, they were able to make a 3D image of someone doing exercises. So you can imagine it, you, um, you sit on the carpet and it can tell who you are and you start doing uh, sit-ups, push-ups, whatever, rolling around and it can tell you what you're doing, how many reps you're doing, and uh, I guess later on they could build things in like uh, sensing your weight and working out exactly what uh, is happening. So this to me is just amazing stuff. And if you want to know what this is similar to in extrapolation, if you think about your smartwatch, in the early days of the smartwatch uh, with Fitbits, they were just trying to work out what you're doing by your arm moving up and down or it must be running. So very clever, clever algorithms. But as you can see there, it does an amazing job and just very little input to then create what is a 3D image of someone working out on the carpet. Why would you need a smart carpet when you could use cameras? That's a good question. And they use cameras to help train this system. But once they've got trained, they got rid of the cameras. And the big reason for this is security and your privacy. So not everyone wants cameras in their home 24-7. And the great thing about this sensor is that uh, it can still detect who you are and if there's movement and things going on very close to what a camera does but it doesn't capture a real image of what you're doing. So if you want to get through and, you know, um, in your swimmers or whatever, train in the morning on the couch, might be a yeah, bit I'll horrific for some day. people. <laughs> yes. It might just, just warn people, please, Tim, first. Anyway, so it's, uh, it's that sort of stuff that you can do. And I think there's no end of it. Imagine you can have carpet that goes, you know, around the house. Uh, if there's someone who falls over who's a loved one, uh, then it could alert you down the track. So these are these types of sensors. And you can do this with Wi-Fi as well. Wi-Fi, I've spoken about this before, where it can sense people and do a sort of radar soft image where it's not really capturing your image. So I think for privacy, this is a really good thing, but I couldn't think of anything better. Like you just, um, you know, it's pretty hard to cheat too if you're doing sit-ups, you've got to do them right. <laughs> Some bad imagery there, doing sit-ups in your Speedos <laughs> in the lounge room. Um, Google and AFL launched a new app. Tell us about it. Yeah, this is really cool. And uh, the, actually, the great thing about this app, it's like a web app. So you just go to uh, Google's uh, website and you can start training like an AFL player. And they've used the uh, gang from the AFLW team to set this up. And, Tim, I've had a, I tried to have a play with it. I couldn't find my little AFL footy. But it uses AI to help you do the basic skills of training. You know, in lockdown in Sydney, if you want to go to the park and play this, this is a great idea. So you set your phone up and you can see... Uh, the players here showing how it's done and all you do is is follow the instructions and then the camera tracks where the ball is now you can be an able body athlete you could be in a wheelchair it doesn't matter what it's doing is tracking the skills of each player as you can see here whether it's handball uh, moving your motion you know your movement uh, through the air on the ground uh, your kicking power that sort of stuff because the app is available the phone is so sophisticated with its tracking capability it's able to help you learn and you get points for each session that you do I really think this is a cool app and it's great it gets kids out and about and particularly here in New South Wales at the moment I think this is a great idea so you just have to search for the uh, um, Aussie Rules uh, Training uh, Lab something like that you'll find it <laughs> and uh, I think it's a great idea Tim especially right now yeah, clever, and great to see them catering for those in wheelchairs as well. Uh, that's another win last night, Dylan Orcott. That was fantastic. With oh, his what victory, a legend! Of what course, a legend. Uh, two Wimbledon titles for him. He's such a character. Now, I've many called, people... I've caught a lot of uh, games with him. Actually, he's a he's a champion. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Now, and many people are wasting their money with on-screen protectors <laughs> for their phones. What's going on here? Yeah, look, uh, if you smashed your phone, you would have smashed your phone oh, a few times. Smashed at the moment. <laughs> So, you know, these, these are like um, 
the, a couple of modern covers. Uh, and there's a bit of difference, though. You know, this one on the right here is a sapphire, and this one here is glass. This one's the uh, Belkin one. And the great thing now is that at least they're easy to set up because uh, I was doing this last night with the Belkin model, which is pretty cool, the glass base. Uh, and they give you a little kit now, and they enable you to then uh, align it and use all the other little sticky bits to get the pads off or the uh, rubbish off it. And if you align it properly, you get a really good finish. I was hopeless at those other plastic ones back in uh, the day, like 10, 15 years ago. And uh, I think they do a great job now. But I think it, it's a good idea to get uh, a cover or a protector for the back as well if you don't use a case because that is susceptible to breakage. Gorilla Glass is very strong and uh, glass is good on these things. But as you notice, in a, in, a, in a sapphire one, it doesn't bend much. In the glass one, it does. So that would, if you dropped it, it might flex better for you with the glass. The sapphire one is almost impervious to scratching. So if you're worried about car keys and stuff like that, it's better to go for the Sapphire one. These things can cost between fifty and uh, you know close to a hundred dollars. This is the EFM model. These things are incredibly robust, and this one's the uh, Belkin one. But there's so many choices you can make, or you can just buy a really cheap one for about a couple of bucks and just dispose of it you know, once you've scratched it up. But uh, oh, there are yeah. a couple of thoughts. Hmm. <laughs> a couple of thoughts there. Yeah, no, some good thoughts there. I, I think I need bubble wrap, but it just makes the phone difficult to use. <laughs> uh, Duro. <laughs> Enjoy your day, and uh, we look forward to uh, catching up with you on Image Matrix Tech. Cheers, Tim. Good to speak to you.